So, good evening everyone. My name is Meghamala and we are here with uh, On Demand Webinar, Importance of Cyber Resilience Framework for Digital Marketing. Now, nowadays cyber crimes are rapidly growing both in complexity and frequency. According, according to TMC's latest research, more than 56 million people is available in the black market in India. More than 1.64 million PAN card database, consumer databases are 56 million and professional database around 0.2 million are available in that market. Buying and selling personal data under the guise of market slash sales research is happening because of a lack of cyber security awareness. As a marketer, to stay competitive in such an unpredictable environment, the security of your brand, application, network and critical business processes should be a top priority. Your business must have a robust cyber security resilience strategy in place that will enable you to maintain business continuity before, during and after a cyber security incident. So we have two cyber two speakers with us, Aparna Ranjit, Head of Digital Marketing Analytic, and Satish Kumar, Head of IT Analytic. Now my first question is to Mr. Satish. According to you, what is cyber resilience? Cyber resilience is a scout. Right? Mm -hmm. It is uh, a framework or a kind of cyber security mm -hmm. law which we are using to protect our data from the attack. Here we are actually it's uh, deploying or in or in all organization before we are getting uh, compromised by anyone. Okay. Here it is used to protect the data, protect from the attackers on the law or its report to the incident as well as block the incident. To get compromised data from the organizations. Okay. So, do you think ki, uh, we need the cyber resilience framework in a company in a proper way? Yeah, the company is executing cyber resilience mm -hmm. framework in a proper way. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that there is the lots of uh, rules, protocols are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, some protocols are very very important for the some organization mm -hmm. and according to that they are setting some set of rules for the particular organization like PCI DSS if you know about that 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 uh, part protocols are for the payment related or payment related uh, organizations mm -hmm. the, in the same kind of uh, HIPAA protocols are used for the healthcare organization mm -hmm. so according to that they are they are setting their protocols and creating around the protocols for their own framework and it's a no they are the standard for the protocols mm -hmm. they are no standard for the, the frameworks the okay. frameworks are designed by the all or on organization by the organizations only what are they going to pro protect oh. and how they are going to protect mm -hmm. that is the framework mm -hmm. actually so that is designed by the company by itself and every company has their own frameworks but they are assuring that whatever the protocols are used or required from their organizations, they are including those protocols in their frameworks. Okay. So, according to you, frameworks are designed by the company? Yeah, frameworks okay. is nothing, it is collections of protocols. Ah, okay. okay. So, it's so, in, so, if you take the examples of that uh, heretic or data is anyone, okay. So, heretic. Uh, uh, as an organization, they have to uh, follow the rules of the ISO 27.1 as well as if they are taking the payment gateway. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, they are not using their own payment gateway, it's from the another third party. Mm -hmm. But suppose that if they are taking the payment gateway mm -hmm. on and they are, they are not going to a third party for the payment processing or for their customers, mm -hmm. in, the, in that case, they have to follow the rules of the PCI PSS also. Okay. Even if the payment gateway they have implemented, the whatever the applications is there, they have to follow the protocol of the PCI, uh, PADSS also. 
okay so the all the protocols they are on frameworks mm -hmm. and when we are going to follow those all the protocols we have to create our own framework which is including all those three frameworks of the creation oh, okay. and the yeah thank you thank you mr satish now coming to ms apna yeah uh, can you let me know how is it so important for digital marketing to professionals to know about cyber security okay so uh, first of all hi thank you so much for the introduction and uh, like satish ji said it's very important mm -hmm. not just for digital marketer for marketing a brand it's very much important cyber security and cyber resilience is helping us out in the cyber security mm -hmm. so i'll start with like you know in market so many brands are there so many brands are right now coming up like you know india is emerging startup we have yes. a lot of startup yeah. coming up mm -hmm. so now here people are there in the market who are using a brand's name and doing all these fraud things in the market mm -hmm. and that is the reason we as a brand we have to make sure that we are cyber resilient and also we are ready for any of that kind of situation so yeah if importance i say you know all these things are very important for a brand and we as a marketer we need something cyber resilience which can help us out with that now if i say importance so you know there are so many things in social media if we talk about so many fraud people are coming up these people are coming they are using brand's name and then creating that thing so this will harm the brand's image as well they it will harm a person as well like for example i am uh see right now i'm working in a place so that means that i'm representing that brand mm -hmm. so of course that is very important to us now second point is the website the most important thing mm -hmm. every bank brand has a website which is there in the market now if we want to protect a website if we want to uh, protect a website we need to be cyber resilient because every time if you go to any of the website there is this encrypt if i'm not wrong so dj there is this thing where you have to yeah encryption is there mm -hmm. where you have to uh, use the plugin and protect your website mm -hmm. so this is the way from where we can protect our website and we can uh, get we cannot 100% get rid of it but yeah we can definitely uh, be ready for that kind of situation as well so yeah it's very important for digital marketing right now in the situation and it will be and i am very glad that people are ready and they're accepting that and started reading about it so that they can go ahead and plan it accordingly okay so thank you for the answer but here i am just curious to know yeah. about uh so yeah so obviously cyber resilience is one of the most important thing but uh despite of being like there is cyber security in the organization some cyber attacks is happening still now yeah okay so uh any of you can let's let me know ki how we can understand ki what are the points we can see that the, so that we can know that there, there is a cyber attack is happening it's up to you so this is Can okay, you elaborate your question? Means, I uh, uh, do you want to know that after this uh, or cyber resilience or the framework implementation, the cyber attack is happening? And yes. The is yes. Right? Yes. So you want to know why? Uh, uh, why and how we can know that the website is attack being attacked? Website may attack for a question of your own. Okay. in the technical term whatever that is happening mm -hmm. the application have some unknown um, layers okay mm -hmm. that is going to capture by the logs in okay. so it's a uh, engineers if we can identify or who is the uh, reviewer mm -hmm. actually if the company has their own reviewer mm -hmm. if there is the logs in monitoring and all so whatever the unknown um, layer is happening on the application or website or anything so mm -hmm. is it is open for the internet and all Uh, we have the logs and we can study those things. But the, in the general terms of how uh, normal people mm -hmm. uh, know that what uh, the mother mm -hmm. side is there high or something like that. So <clears throat> if the attacker done something mm -hmm. which is not related to the website mm -hmm. or application, then only the people can know. Otherwise, if the attacker is attacked, he website uh, got hacked or compromised, mm -hmm. and attacker doing nothing. So nobody knows that. Oh. Okay. okay. in that case if they are publishing the unknown um, um, content or unrelevant content of mm -hmm. your website then only you can know that if you uh, go through the 
uh, whatever the you have the page content post or anything mm -hmm. if anything else we are going to create automatically then only you can know that and this is the uh, and the best way uh, not is the i think whoever is operating the website mm -hmm. they have the google search console and all mm -hmm. and so in the search console every day google is crawling your website to whatever the page and content is there and you can go through that as a normal person who is not looking on the blogs and all they can go to the search console they can check that what are the history of the crawl what are the page has crawled from my websites and all and if there there also you can get to know what are the pages has crawled and those pages are not uh, created by you means the uh, Mm -hmm. and it has mm -hmm. created so according to that you can know that the other thing is that uh, after this much of the security still the edge uh, or have the uh, compromised by the tagger small because of that there is uh, some term in the security zero day attack okay okay the zero day attack is uh, means uh, whatever the security holes or security breach is there that is the known by the center in the means in the sense whatever you are using like wordpress you are using mm -hmm. for the website mm -hmm. okay and uh, whatever the security uh, is required wordpress you are using you have to add your file and all the things that are placed on the website so everything is secure now okay. so everything is secure in the website as you are placed in a firewall or uh, so, uh, whatever the application is done Set the action protection system and all, and the WordPress is automatically uh, mitigating all the security mm -hmm. holes and all. But sub mitigating the security holes means there is some security holes or security breaches there, mm -hmm. so they are fixing okay. every day, right? Yeah. Uh, and nobody knows about that. But the attacker is also kind of a security researcher. Okay, they always research on that what are the code standards followed by the company and all, and. Uh, you know, WordPress is the open source. The code is for the people, yeah. so they can do the research and all, and they can find out the bugs. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And on that bugs, if uh, if it's a new, mm -hmm. okay, then nobody know about that bugs. So the attacker can use those bugs. So when attacker attack on those bugs and your website get hacked, mm -hmm. then after that people know that this is the also a bug. Okay. Oh. And then WordPress start fixing on that. So this is the zero day attack. Means first day the attacker know that this bug is there, but nobody know about it. Oh. Okay. okay. So in that case, nobody can protect. It. Oh yeah. Only is that uh, whatever the standard we have follow, top of the applications and all, we can enhance those things. But that is also for the protection and prevention. It's not like we are 100 percent secure over the internet. Thank you, Satish. Thank you very much. Now my question to Aparna: Why should digital marketers be aware about cyber security of their contact database? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like <laughs> Satish ji explained us all in detail how it is all the technical terms. I would talk about my digital marketing okay. game. So, yeah, definitely, like you said, contact detail. What we are talking okay. about. We as a brand, we have our clients, a yes. number of clients. Like for example, maybe we have 10k of client, we have 20k of number. Now we are doing the marketing with them. The regular one that we are doing, the email marketing, the social media, everything we are performing. Now, why we need cyber resilience? Because when it comes to our contact database, mm -hmm. if we are talking about our database, that is very, uh, what we call it, it's very uh, private to us. We are not putting it in our markets mm -hmm. because our okay. client trusts us, right? Yes. yes. We can't just give it to the market that you can contact them because there is the email ID, their phone number, and that's very personal thing if we are getting our uh, customers' mm -hmm. detail. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we need this thing because uh, all these things going on in the market, like for example, somebody visited our website, they are there, we receive their detail. Now we have to make sure that that is not misused by anybody else. So all these uh, fraud calls, these phishing on social, uh, sorry, on website and fraud on social media, these things, we need to prevent it. Also, other than that, if you talk about a product-based brand, like for example, somebody giving a product, so there is always a 
payment gateway on a website that is there, PayPal or any anything we are using. So now, if anyone is coming to our unloyal customer who are coming to our website trying to do a payment or something like that, then credit card detail is also there. And that is very important and that is very important to us because they trust us that is why they are coming to our platform mm -hmm. and then putting all the detail. Now it is our responsibility to protect that as well and that is the main reason we need to protect our website, we need to protect our social media if someone is coming to us, nobody should fraud them, nobody should do phishing with them. So yeah, definitely it's very important for us and it is very important for our, our brand's sake and also our customers. So yeah, this is something I would like to talk about. Yes. Thank you, Aparna. So this is to all panel. Remember my next question. It is like, what do you think about how we can prevent it? Means the cyber resilience or uh, cyber attacks, so it will not affect our digital marketing team. See, uh, I will. I can uh, yes. just start with. I will not be very much clear with the technical terms mm -hmm. like strategy, but yeah, what I will say. These things are nowhere ending. It's not like they'll end today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's like a continuous process. We should be ready with it. We should not, like for example, if something is happening on to a website, mm -hmm. it shouldn't be like that if uh, somebody is hacking our website, we are not operating or something like that. And that is where cyber resilience comes. It's like a, a kind of an umbrella where even if something is happening, we have to make sure that we are operational. And prevention, if I say again, it's something that will take time, that, that is a process. So yeah, I think this is what I will say, that marketing is again, uh, this thing is both of them plays hand in hand. It's not like that only marketing will go or something like that. So now technical, I think Satish, you will be interested Yeah, for protecting the data, actually the self so it is a and two categories in that data. No. <coughs> okay. <coughs> to protect the data on the digital world, there are the two things we need to care about that. One is the technical mm -hmm. and one is the uh, the term in known as in the cyber security is called social engineering. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for the social engineering we should uh, train our employee, give some uh, security uh, training kind of that. What are the data they know mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and what, uh, how the data is important for that and how to use your data. Like, you know, at some time the people are writing passwords on the papers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after using the uh, password, they throw the papers into the dashboard. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is not a good habit. Anyone can take from the dashboard and all. So, so these types of training we have to give them because the attack is happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other license. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go with the monitoring the logs, it will day every servers are under the attack. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that if the people know exact username, password and all, they, they are not doing the attack. They actually illegally into in, in the system. Okay, mm -hmm. into the system. Those that are attacked, we call them. No. Okay. Only the thing is that uh, who is logging the system, whatever the access provided to them as per the, their role and responsibility and if they are doing the, something else mm -hmm. apart from their role responsibility then only it's identified that maybe the, the username and the password is compromised by the user right otherwise nobody knows that but if the attack uh, randomly try to crack your system and all mm -hmm. usually it captures the logs because they are not going to success in the first attempt second attempt the people's two three four or it's called as a soft team Security Operations Center, mm -hmm. where the people are sitting and they are monitoring each and every logs, huh. each and every settings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever the random attack that is easily prevented from there itself. Why? Because if you anybody attack on any system, there is a some address called the IP address, which is unique for every system. We are mm -hmm. easily we can block the IP address, so the next attack will not come into that. So these all the things are uh, prevented by the monitoring and all. But the social media is the most important where we have to train our employee to not uh, share the information. Mm -hmm. Means uh, secret information, confidential. Sorry, don't share the confidential information to the others, either it's a family member, friends, or anywhere. Nobody know who will you. Thank you, thank you, Shadisi. Uh, so my next question. Uh, this is uh, just my curiosity. 
So if the attack uh, is happening in night when we are in home, it's attacking on our database, marketing database, and also in the website. Is there any way that we can prevent the attack or something like that? You can set up the setting night. Right? Totally. Totally. See, here the night means what you are going to the home. Yes. But, but in the organization, the other, other team, other people are there. As I told you, the soft team means the soft team is open 20.7 to 65. Okay. Okay, in the organization. Okay. And if, if you don't want to, means if you don't want to see your data, you don't want to see your logs or anything, but your system will be protected, better to disconnect from the internet. Otherwise, no, no option. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next question to you again, Satishji. What are the advantages marketers face when there is a breach of cybersecurity? Coming. What are the disadvantages marketers face when there is a breach of cybersecurity? See, cybersecurity in terms of the website, mm -hmm. in terms of the content, actually the content is most important. Mm -hmm. Because it's captured by the, the leading a company like Google and Microsoft, mm -hmm. Yahoo, very own kind of thing, and they are not going to uh, leave you mm -hmm. if your content is not up to the mark. The thing is that if your website is get compromised by the AI attackers, so in the website, if there is no data, not like you suppose your website is a blog, okay, mm -hmm. there you are not taking the any money or any any kind of things, right? Only content is there. Mm -hmm. okay. So what attacker can do? They can harm your brand reputation only by changing the content, uh -huh. giving unrelevant content over there. Uh -huh. okay. So suppose that you are maintaining your website from last five years, mm -hmm. your reputation is good, everything is perfect, mm -hmm. you are getting a good amount of traffic, your domain authority or domain page authority by the Google mm -hmm. have the 80 or 85, 90, 70 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if this types of hack, uh, attack is happening over your website, Suddenly, in if see the Google generally take uh, one day for crawl your website. Okay. Okay. Huh. If your uh, content is frequently updated, mm -hmm. okay. If you are updating content frequently, it take one day to crawl. Mm -hmm. okay. Suppose that uh, your website crawled by the one PM. Next day it will again the same time one or two PM. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And your uh, server or your website will compromise at 3 pm. Then you have still 17 hours to fix it. Okay. If you didn't fix it, Google will call next day 1 pm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they capture all those data also, which is tempered by the attackers. Okay. Attack. okay. Yeah. And those data will harm your reputation. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, if it's a uh, uh, less amount of data, maybe the Google will. Give you some time to fix it or not. But if the less uh, more amount of data and the shift is not uh, ignorable mm -hmm. by the Google, mm -hmm. okay, they will decrease your reputation from 80, 80 to 40 30, which you have invested five years to build. Okay. So these are the things happening by, uh, with the marketer and they are facing lots of issues to again and again. If the website is get compromised three times in a year, okay. They Suppose that if your website get compromised three times in a year, mm -hmm. but two times in a year, so uh, every time so you are just fixing your reputation, so trying to build your brand, uh, branding and all, but it's not happening. Next year again, it's the same position. If it's attack, if it is an attack hand. So these are the things that, in my point of view, the market is facing. And apart from that, if you are sell, uh, selling the content over the email, over the social media and all. And your content is not uh, means unrelevant content. Like, uh, whatever if you are uh, running your website in the English language, and some content is related to the Chinese or Japanese or anything, mm. which you know. So Google will mark it, and your uh, social media presence will also be hampered. As well as the email is going to be a spam, or maybe you are not getting the market is spam and all. So these are the issues facing by the marketer, which is actually first. First of all, you will get the less brand positioning. Okay. Oh. And then after less the brand positioning and the uh, still your content is in the hacker hand, 
Yeah, definitely. Like I said, it's always hand in hand. Like mm-hmm. sales and marketing, they're going hand in hand. It's always better. Like Satish just said, it's always better that people get educated. People should know at least basic of what it is, so that even if in their worst condition, they can they should not be falling for all these kind of traps. Like for example, our brand, Eretic, if we talk about, we have someone like Satish who will be helping us out and who is definitely teaching us. with all the things how to re- resolve all these issues on basic level yes. and if any uh, different thing is there so he is anyway there to help us out so yeah definitely it is going to help us out even in future mm-hmm. and it is definitely going to help us uh, our brand to again go in a very good way like he said for website if i talk about uh, it will definitely help us to grow and there is always a negative part as you know so people will definitely come uh, again on us and they'll be doing this so what i think that it's a continuous process where we have to just deal with it and because of this these kind of thing our operation should not get hampered So yeah, this is what uh, I think we should we will be getting in cyber resilience, and that is what we are following. And we we'll definitely suggest all the brand out there to take this thing in account because that is very important. Absolutely. Thank you, Aparna. Now my last question is to all of the panel members. According to you, how can we put a proper cyber resilience framework in the company so that marketers will not get affected by attacks in future? For technical side, we can do whatever we have in the for the all the standards, whatever we need to follow and for our business process, mm-hmm. and make a good uh, framework, own framework around those uh, protocols and all. And uh, the team is always working over the latest update. What are the latest updates going on in the market? What are the latest uh, bugs are coming? So we have to fix as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Like that. See, bugs are sometimes uh, open by the attackers, sometimes open by the developer. Yeah. The developer also know that what I have developed uh, previously, mm-hmm. maybe the, this is the bug there. I have to fix. The, in that case, you have the more more time. If the attacker get to know first of all, then we have a less time. But if when it's coming to the market, we need to fix as soon as possible, maybe one or two days max. And uh, always monitoring whatever is going with your servers, whatever is going with your applications, and all. If anything is normal in the normal behavior, or if anything abnormal behavior, we immediately look out on that and try to fix it. Then, so uh, if we can do these all the things, means it's a book, ongoing process. It's not that like uh, your uh, framework is fixed today. The framework you can fix today or any day of the. ंग I think uh, thank you so much to DJ for <laughs> letting us know all about it. Okay, so thank you all panel members for this awesome discussion. I hope our viewers also will be like enlightened by this discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.